How's it going guys? My name is John Coe. I'm an engineer at STX. I'm here today to teach you guys how to strain crux mesh. So to string a women's mesh pocket, uh, you're going to need a couple things. Uh, obviously a lacrosse head, some crux mesh, two leathers, four sidewall strings, two cross lace pieces. These are about uh, probably four, four feet long. And then I've got two shooting strings, a uh, pair of scissors. And if your strings aren't uh, tipped, then you might need a lighter to finish those. The first part I'm gonna start with is getting the leathers in, the leathers and the mesh. So I'm gonna take this rough side of the leather and have it facing me. I'm gonna put it through the back of the scoop, on that outer one. And leathers typically come with a little die cut hole. I'm just gonna use the very first one. But before I thread this through, I'm gonna actually capture the mesh. And so when you're looking at a piece of mesh, there's gonna be two distinct rows. Uh, there's gonna be a row of seven, and then there's gonna be a row of six. We're gonna work with, for the top row, the row of seven. I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna fold it back on itself. And believe it or not, there's actually a top side and a bottom side to mesh. You want, when it's facing the back of the stick, the mesh to curl off, that'll put the rougher side against where the ball would lie. And so I'm gonna take that top row of seven, fold one row back on itself. You see, I took this top row and I folded it to the next matching row of seven. I'm gonna stretch that out a little bit. And I'm now gonna place this so that that folded over uh, side is facing me, the back of the head. And I'm gonna capture that first hole with the leather. And then I'm gonna take the leather and put it through this die cut hole. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side. So now I've got the mesh captured by the leathers. Uh, I've got the two leathers still dangling. And the next thing I'm gonna do is actually weave these leathers through the side of this mesh. And so like I mentioned before, there's rows of six and there's rows of seven. And so I'm gonna start by coming in through the back side of this seven and then come back through the front side of the next seven and just work my way down. I'm gonna keep doing that until I get towards about the length of the head. Doesn't have to be exact. You can go, once you get towards the bottom of, uh, or towards the end of the string job, you can kind of modify this if you have too many rows or not enough rows. And I like to finish by coming through the back so the mesh is sticking off the back side and not the inside, like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side as well. And I'm gonna match what I did on the other side so that I start with coming in through the back and then back from the front again. So you can see that I'm symmetrical with the other side. All right, now that I've got these leathers uh, woven through the mesh, I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna put them through the bottom holes. Uh, like the scoop, there's four holes on the bottom. I'm going to take these leathers and put them on the outside to match what I did on the, the scoop. So I'm gonna thread those through. And I'm gonna pull them pretty tight for when I'm stringing. They can get looser later on, but generally on the outer runners, these out, outside guys, you're gonna want them relatively tight 
to help hammock the ball when you're cradling. So now we've set this up, the next thing I'm gonna do is the top string. For the top string, I need one sidewall lace. I'm gonna start by just doing a basic loop and through knot. Sometimes I like to double up and do that twice just so that I can't slip through the top hole or the stringy hole that I'm gonna thread it through. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna start from the left side. I'm gonna take the very first uh, stringy hole that's available and head through that. And then this part can be a little tricky, but I'm basically gonna thread through that loop I made with the leather. Once I'm through that, in the clear. And then this is preference, but I like to come through and grab underneath that, uh, that second hole in. There's like a little loop sticking out. I like to grab that to try to help make it tight because when you're stringing a top string, your goal, just like it is with like a men's head, is to make it as tight as possible or get the mesh as tight as possible to the scoop. And so I'm gonna try to grab everything I can. This next part, I'm gonna come in through the, uh, I haven't touched this uh, third mesh hole yet, but I'm just gonna come in through uh, the back side of the scoop with the sidewall string. And then I'm gonna come back through the third mesh hole. So I've got my first one here, grabbed by the leather. The second one is right here. And the third one I'm gonna grab right here. I'm gonna come through the front side, weave it through, and I'm gonna make sure that this loop I just made from putting it through the backside of the scoop, I'm actually on the inside of that so that when I pull it tight, I'm overlapping. And so I'm gonna pull that really tight and then I'm gonna do the opposite of what I just did. Instead of coming through the scoop, I'm gonna come back through the mesh. Now I'm on the front side of the stick. I'm gonna come through the front side of the scoop It's gonna make that knot. And now heading over to the next one, I'm gonna do what I did before and try to grab the top part of this hole. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do what I did on the last, uh, that last hole. I'm now in the fifth hole. I'm gonna come through the back of the scoop, come through the front of the mesh, pull that tight, and then like before, come through the back of the mesh before I ever touch the scoop, and then come through the front of the scoop. This makes a loop, I'm gonna go through that loop. And I'm gonna pull that really tight. And then I'm just gonna do what I've been doing and come through the top of this mesh part to try to add a little tension to that column of mesh. And then I gotta get through this leather loop. And then I'm gonna finish off by heading through the top string hole that matches the side I came in from. And I'm gonna do the same knot, I'm gonna make a loop, and then cross back through it, and I'm gonna try to string that as tight as I can. And like I said on the other side, sometimes I like to come through and do a second one, and that just helps prevent the string from slipping through the hole. All right, now I'm gonna start with uh, the sidewall strings. So I'm gonna take a sidewall lace, another loop and through knot, And I like to start a little lower so that I have another hole I can come back through with a shooting string later. So I'm gonna take the third, uh, third string hole from the top, come through from the outside, and then I'm just gonna do a bunch of these. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just coming in from the outside of the uh, sidewall hole, 
and then coming up through the loop I've made. So when I come through, there's a little, there's a big loop of string and I'm gonna come through on this side. So I'm stringing these not super tight, but moderately tight. I'm still gonna have to get a string through here later, so it's easy to leave a little slack. And I'm kind of just alternating every other string hole. I like having at least one that's open here so that I can come back through with a U shooter later. And then I'm just gonna wrap this up. You just come through from the inside of the sidewall so that the string's on the outside and now I can just tie another knot and we're all set. Now I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. You definitely wanna make sure that you're matching what you've done on the other side of the head. So I'm always trying to stay symmetrical as I go along here. So if we've made it to this point, uh, one of the last major things we need to do is tie these leathers to the sidewall. And so I'm gonna use a cross lace string to do that. That's gonna be this narrow string. It's kind of smooth and slick. And like before, I'm gonna do a loop and through knot to give myself a little bit of extra at the end in case I wanna come back and add some slack later. So I'm actually gonna come in through that same first hole that I put the top string uh, through. I should have enough room to thread this through. And now I've got this string through here. I'm going to come across and I'm just going to grab through this uh, every junction where the row of seven went through the leather. Those are the ones I'm going to loop through. So I'm putting my uh, string through the mesh and coming around. Crossing it over looks like this. Just a typical, traditional uh, cross lace. What I like to do for these upper ones, since there's a lot of room for these to slide around and you need this part of your pocket to be pretty structured and stable, I like to double up. And so I'm gonna come in from the front side on the second one, same hole. Make a knot that looks like that. And I want this to be pretty tight so that the uh, ball doesn't hit the scoop or get caught up under the scoop on release. And so I'm gonna do that for probably the first three. So that's the first one, I'll do it on these ones. And then once I get down to here, I'm just gonna go through and back out and keep it moving. So I'm gonna head over to the sidewall and go through the first loop I made. In through the back, and I'll come back. I've got this overlap right here. And then I'm gonna head back over to the mesh and we're just gonna zigzag our whole way down. So I'm gonna do what I did before, last time I was at the mesh. Pull it through, I got that overlap, but I'm gonna come back through again from this front side. Make a nice knot like that. And then back to the sidewall again. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep like a decent amount of tension here. Like I don't want it to be super tight so that it's pulling the mesh over a whole bunch, but I want it to not be very loose either.
And this is where I want the sweet spot of the pocket to be. So I'm gonna start letting it loosen up a little bit instead of putting as much tension in it as I was before. We're just gonna keep making our way down the head. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to stop doing these double knots and I'm just going to do like a nice quick loop. Now I'm down to the bottom. I'm just gonna take this and head right out where I went with my sidewall through the uh, last string hole. So it looks like that. I'm just gonna tie this off, a little looping through. And now I'm gonna go to the other side and do exactly what I just did on this side, uh, on this side to match trying to be as symmetrical as I can be. Last but not least, need to do a bottom string. Right now the mesh is just kind of floating here at the bottom. Uh, and so I'm gonna take a piece of sidewall string and loop it through these inner two uh, uh, bottom string holes. And that'll allow me to uh, tighten the pocket on the fly when I'm on the field. And also, you know, keep the ball from finding its way out of the bottom of the pocket. So I'm gonna take my last sidewall string a little knot and especially on the bottom I like to double up since those holes are meant to have a leather go through them and the sidewall string is a lot skinnier I'll use like a double knot like that all right so I'm gonna take my sidewall string and I'm gonna come in through the inner bottom string hole like this and right now I've got this bottom row of seven, this is the last one that I threaded through the leathers. I'm actually gonna jump ahead of that one to this row of six. So there should be six holes here. And I'm gonna come in from the front side of this, this outside guy right here. Come in, then I'm gonna go back out through the back side of that second hole. Come in through the front of the third back through. I'm just going to keep weaving it through that row of six, staying in the same row. And I'm going to finish. If you choose a row of even hole, an even amount of holes, then it'll, you can just keep it symmetric and go all the way through and it'll finish out the same way. So now I've got the string and I'm going to come through this second hole. Pulling that down relatively tight. And now the structure of my pocket is pretty much finished. I'm just gonna tie this into a double knot real quick. Pocket's almost finished, we just need to put some shooters. So generally I'm gonna do one straight across the top and then one that generally has the shape of an upside down U that comes through here. I'm gonna start with the one that comes across the top. So I'm gonna grab one of my shooters to start on the left side and 
I mentioned before, I left uh, a stringy hole open for me to just fit that right through there. I'm gonna take the other side and loop it through so they're both on this side. And unlike the rest of the pocket, I like to string the shooters from the front side because that's the part that's gonna be contacting the ball and I like to make sure that it's all fit and there's no loose parts uh, the ball can get caught up on. Uh, on this open part, I'm just gonna start uh, twisting the string a little bit. So I'll probably just do one twist since there's nothing to really thread it through. And I'm gonna make sure that one of these laces ends up on the back side of this leather while the other one's on the front. And I'm gonna choose this row of, uh, row of seven right here, the first one that the cross lace wrapped around. And I'm gonna bring this lace on the back side of the leather up through the front of that mesh hole. And then I'm gonna take the one that was on the front side of the leather and bring it through underneath of that opposing side. And so I'm gonna just get this nice twisting pattern. The one that's coming in through the front side of the mesh is always gonna be going underneath of the one that's coming in through the back. I'm gonna take one side and make sure it goes through that string hole. The other one's gonna come around this back side. And since this is the top one, I kinda of want this one to be somewhat tight so that when the ball hits it, it doesn't just get pushed up underneath the scoop. I want this to kinda of have some tightness to it, but not too much. So enough so I can kinda of go like that with my hand. And I'll probably come back to the front and make sure that it's tight over here too so any loose parts don't redistribute themselves. And knotting this, I like to use, I like to take my two fingers, wrap around to make a loop. And then I come through that loop I made and I find that that knot usually stays much better than crossing them and doing a box knot. And so I'm done with that top shooter. So now we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put our U shooter. I've left a hole open right here, which is a good starting point, but we need to map out where we're gonna have that thing land. I like to usually keep a row below, uh, an open row below the top and the U. So I'm gonna choose this, uh, this next row of seven uh, that I connected uh, to the sidewall over here. I'm gonna choose that one is where the U ends. And I'm gonna have the U, for this one I think I'm gonna do uh, five diamonds across. You could do three, that would start approaching more of a V where it's a little tighter. I'm gonna use a, a five across. And so I'm gonna aim for this hole right here. So I need to kind of make sure I'm doing a straight line from here to this hole. And I kind of need to know that going in so that I can choose like which trajectory I kind of take towards that hole. So again, I'm gonna take my shooting string and place it through that sidewall hole. Wrap this one through like that. I'm gonna come back around to the front side. And I'm just gonna keep intertwining them. So I'm gonna go through there, up through here. In this gap right here, I can kind of treat these uh, open spaces between these cross laces as if there are mesh holes. Just keep wrapping over top. So now I'm gonna jump over to, I'm trying to get to here. And so I'm gonna come down diagonally and start off on this hole right here that's going through the leather. So now I'm wrapping over top of the leather. 
jog up to the next one. And then now I am on that corner of my U right here. And I'm gonna start making my way over the top. So you can see the first half that I've done, and I'm just gonna come back down and try to make this look as symmetrical as possible by going through the same holes that I did on the other side. And then I'm going to take this guy and come through the uh, inside of the sidewall, that string hole that matches with the one I started with on the other side. Pull that through. I don't want this U to be too tight, so I'm going to kind of run my hand through it the way a ball would travel through it. But I don't want to be too loose either. And I'm going to do the same knot that I did before. I'm going to take the two laces, Wrap them around and then come through. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and uh, cut all these loose laces. I usually like to leave like just a little bit, maybe like an inch, inch and a half on each of these just in case I ever need to come back. So I'm just gonna go through and trim these up. This is all preference. That one looks a little long, it's a little long. All right, so I'm all trimmed up. And if I leave these just cut as they are, they're gonna fray apart and eventually your knots will come undone. So you're gonna wanna take a lighter to singe the ends of these strings. But overall, you're just trying to give them just a quick little touch, not too much. Make sure you don't get the flame too close to the pocket. All right, some people like to tie these leathers up. I'm just gonna tie them into a quick little cross. Otherwise you can tie them into a knot and trim them off if you don't want to have all this extra loose leather coming, hanging around. And these tend to come undone a lot, so it's nice just to tie them into a knot and get rid of it. But I know a lot of people like to fashion them up like that. And there you have it, all done. <laughs>